Hi everyone. Let's read this article from the Indian Express. Explained why ISRO's EOS 03 launch failed. ISRO EOS 3 launch, the launch would have marked India's return to normal space flight. But it has failed. How important is a rocket? And how far will its failure impact the upcoming missions Gaganian, Chandrayaan 3, and Nisar? Test 3. The launch of the GSLV F 10 was supposed to mark the return of normal space flight activity on the Indian space scene. Instead, its failure on Thursday has cast a shadow of the Indian Space Research Organization's launch calendar, which has already been severely affected by the pandemic. Apart from the loss of a crucial satellite, it is likely to impact the schedule of some big-ticket future missions as well. Though the ISRO has not yet disclosed how serious the malfunctioning was that led to the failure. Now let's see, like, what went wrong. About 5 minutes into the launch early on Thursday morning, the flight of GSLV F-10, which was carrying an Earth observation satellite, EOS-03, deviated from its scheduled trajectory. The first and second stages of the rocket had functioned normally and detached. But the upper stage, powered by a cryogenic engine fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen at very low temperatures, failed to ignite. The rocket lost the power to carry on and this remains, along with that of the satellite, most likely fell off somewhere in the Andaman Sea. US-03 is a powerful Earth observation satellite that was supposed to help in the near real-time monitoring of the Indian landmass. It was lost in the process. The deployment of US-03 initially planned for March last year was already delayed by over a year and a half first by some technical glitches and then by the pandemic. EOS-03 would have provided relatively low resolution but continuous imaginary of the Indian landmass that was meant to be used for monitoring of natural disaster like floods and cyclones, water bodies, crops, vegetation, also forest cover. The mission could not be fully accomplished mainly because of a technical anomaly observed in the cryogenic stage was all that Israel Chairman K. Sivan said after the launch failure. So now let's see where it went wrong. Problems in the cryogenic stage of this rocket are not new. A similar issue had led to the failure of GSLV D3 as well in April 2010. That was the first flight of GSLV with an indigenic, ind indigenous cryogenic engine modeled on the Russian design, very similar to the one flown on Thursday. The cryogenic stage had failed to ignite on that occasion as well. Eight months later, the next GSLV flight, this time being powered by a Russian cryogenic engine, the last one of the seven that Russia had supplied as part of a deal in the 1990s, also failed. A failure analysis has found malfunctioning in the electronics of the cryogenic engine. Between then and now, however, the GSLV Mach 2 rocket has carried out six successful launches all using that same indigenously developed cryogenic engine in the upper stage. The last one in December 2018, which deposited GSAT-7A, a communication satellite, into its orbit. The struggles with the cryogenic state seem to be a thing of the past, but Thursday's failure has brought the host back. There are no more launches of GSLV Mac to schedule for this year, but several in 2022 and 2023. Scientists said it was possible that Thursday's malfunctioning was accidental, in which case there m might not be any major impact on the schedule of the future launches by this rocket. But a serious issue could push back even major missions like the human space flight. Let's see the impact on the future missions. Missions like Gaganian and Chandrayaan 3 will be launched on GSLV Mach 3, a more advanced version of the GSLV rocket that is designed to carry much heavier payloads into space. GSLV Mach 3 2 uses an indigenously developed cryogenic engine in the upper stage, but unlike the one in Mach 2, this is not a reverse engineered Russian engine. Instead, the cryogenic engine used in the GSLV Mach 3, called CE 20, 
has been the result of over three decades of research and development, starting from scratch, and uses a different process to burn fuel. It is closer to the designs used in the Ariane rockets that were used by ISRO earlier to send its heavier satellites into space. Performance of the first and second stages was normal. However, the cryogenic upper staging mission did not happen due to technical anomaly. The mission couldn't be accomplished as intended. Israel stayed in a statement without giving any further details.